Welcome back, Internet, to another Reddit story. We're back to Tales from the Pharmacy. For those of you that are new to the channel, I worked in pharmacy for seven years, so I got a lot of stories of my own. Let's get into it. I'm going out of town. I'm by no means upset. It was just humorous. Patient's medicine is out of stock and on order for the next day. I give her a courtesy call to let her know and ask if she's okay to wait. Q. I'm going out of town. Can you see who else has it? The nearest store is roughly 11 miles away, and she isn't thrilled. Ma'am, when exactly are you going to go out of town? She lets me know it will be tomorrow evening. Oh, well, your order will be here around noon tomorrow if you want to just go ahead and come and pick it up here. We're in agreement, and life goes on. Her husband comes through the next day to pick it up, and I try to make conversation. Oh, you guys are going out of town, right? He just looks really confused for a moment before he drops, Oh, uh, well, yeah, next week. Who in the world instructed every single patient to tell us to go on out of town as an attempt to rush their medication? This would happen more often than I'd like to admit in pharmacy. Patients that tell white lies thinking that he'll just rush whatever you're trying to do. There's one lady that I remember particularly. If you think of like strung out drug addicts, you, you know, you <laughs> want to think of this stereotypical person covered in tattoos, uh, marks along their arms, skinny as hell you know typical stereotypical drug addict but this was a 60 something year old grandma looking person and she was a drug addict she was hooked on uh benzodiazepine uh, one of the it was either xanax or clonopin or both i don't who knows so she tells us that she's going out of town she's going to another state and she's going to be gone for a while so she needs her medication early to take with her and she was out of refills and of course she was leaving in like a day so we tell her you know if she calls her doctor's office they could fax a prescription to the pharmacy that she's going to be at in whatever state she's going to but that wasn't good enough for her so we call the doctor's office let them know the situation we also have her call the doctor so that she can tell them where she's going and we get an okay from the doctor to refill her uh, Xanax early and we go ahead and fill it for her and we, we sell it to her at least here in Utah, if it's a schedule three through five, doctors can approve early refills on those, but we have to get verification, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so we sell it to her. She goes, she's happy, whatever. And then two days later, her husband's back in. And I just ask him, oh, did you guys end up going on your trip? And then he, he says, what trip? I'm like, oh, okay. So I called the doctor's office and let him know what had happened. Basically, she lied to get an early refill and doctor's approval to get early controlled medication. Uh, she was no longer welcome at that doctor's office, but because retail pharmacy is all about patient care and everything and not about making money, right? Uh, I'm not going to tell you which pharmacy it was, but uh, yeah, they were totally okay with seeing her back again because as far as what they were concerned was, it was like, oh, it was the doctor's fault, not our fault. So they allowed her to come back and refill more medications, even though that she uh, pulled the wool over our eyes and the doctor's eyes trying to get early refills of medication because green makes right. As long as, as long as your credit card clears, we're okay helping you. Patient hands me a prescription bottle that says no refills. Me. This prescription has no refills? Patient. I, I love it too because you look at the bottle and you take it in your hand and you look over and you notice that it has no refills and you do that oh uh yeah this has no more refills as you try to hand it back to them and then they ha they grab the bottle and it's like I must I must have grabbed the wrong bottle L let me let me see and I'm like well let me let me look up to see what else let me see if I can find the prescription on my computer I go on the computer and it's like no the bottle that they handed me was the correct bottle it's <laughs> I mean, I even had a person, like literally this, I swear to God, this happened. A girl handed me a prescription bottle. I look at it, it says no refills, and I kind of hand it back to her and I say, yeah, sorry, this has no refills. She says, well, okay, all right. Well, you know, there should be something on the bottle to let you know if you don't have any more refills or not. And I, she's still holding the bottle and I grab the bottle out of her hand and I turned it a little bit and I'm like yeah it says it right here 
<laughs> the expression on her face. She was like, but she she's she, without beating, without skipping a beat. She was like, well, yeah, still. I'm like, all right, well, you can contact your doctor, blah blah blah, and try to get you more refills. But it oh, it was it was glorious. It was like, yeah, it does say that there are no refills on it. You dummy. Bathroom breaks are impossible when these chain pharmacies keep cutting techs and hours. I'm so tired of having to hold my pee for so long, I'm about to pee myself. Because I can't get away from the long line of customers, drive through phones ringing, and the millions of other things we have to do with so little people. I'm two months in, and I'm paranoid about my fluid intake on work days. The culture of no breaks, no rest, move faster is so ingrained it is impossible to describe to outsiders. Yeah, but be careful because you gotta stay hydrated, especially water, or you'll get headaches. It's ridiculous that by law we're required to have breaks, but with these cuts these companies are making, it's impossible to do so. And if you do, not all the work gets done, then you'll get in trouble for it, and then you'll more likely get it fired in the next round of layoffs. I'm sure that there's some retail pharmacies that, you know, are actually pretty good to work for. I... I don't know, the best one I worked for was Walmart, but even they had some really weird rules. Like, you get breaks and stuff like that, but it's almost like if you ask for it, then they look at you like, I guess you can take a break. You know, because they can't tell you no, but they make you feel so guilty for taking them. But the two things that always bug me is the no food or drink rules that they had. Now, I get it up to a, a point about the no food rule. Apparently, they had the no food rule because, this is a rumor, but it sounds plausible, that one day a regional manager was in one of the pharmacies in our district, and a tech brought a rotisserie chicken from the deli back there and was munching on it between filling orders, just picking at it with his fingers and going to fill medication. The regional manager just looked at it and said, okay, no more food. So, yeah. But they also said that we couldn't have any water bottles back there, or any drinks. They gave us these, you know, those cone cups that you can get for like snow cones? They gave us that and we could fill it up with water at the sink. So you had like this four ounce paper cup that you can fill up at the sink and get water from. Which is ridiculous. I mean, we're all adults back there, but they wouldn't let us have water because, and this is a rumor, but I believe it's true that there was a tech at one of the pharmacies somewhere in the region that snuck pills in her water bottle. So they said, okay, no more water bottles for anyone, which is ridiculous. They gave us these four ounce drink cups to drink out of and we're running around all day. So that lasted for about two years. And then they finally said, okay, you guys can have water bottles, but they have to be see-through and it has to be water. So, no Sprite. <laughs> How dare you guys bring back Sprite. Those bubbles. You can hide pills in those bubbles. Apparently, reading it and following instructions were too difficult. Got an e-script from an ophthalmologist today, which got declined for prior authorization. So, an e-script is kind of like a fax, but it's electronically sent over. Um, that's... I guess that's a good explanation for it. And prior authorization is... If an insurance doesn't want to pay for a particular medication, either it being too expensive or, well, generally it's just because it's too expensive, the insurance will say needs a prior authorization, meaning that the doctor needs to fill out some paperwork, call the insurance, or prescribe something else. The agency messages couldn't have been clearer. Prior authorization required. Use alternative product, or if medication is necessary, doctor call this number. As soon as I send it back to the doctor, the patient comes to the counter, so I explain the rejection and the next steps to her. She says, I guess that's what the paper from the other store said. He said that he had no idea what he was supposed to do with it. Too long, didn't read. Doctor sends a new e-script for the same medication to a different pharmacy because that might solve the problem rather than just following the clear directions to get his patient their medication. I don't know why that's a too long, didn't read. It's only a paragraph. Too long, didn't read. So yeah, apparently the doctor was sent that same message saying, hey, prescribe something else or call the insurance at a different pharmacy. 
So instead of him doing what was said on the instructions, he decides to just call it into a different pharmacy. Maybe they'll figure it out. Well, you know, George Carlin did say, somewhere out there is the world's worst doctor. The scariest part is that someone has an appointment with him tomorrow. Gives you, uh, something to think about. Thank you again for joining me on another Reddit story thing. Tales from the Pharmacy. So, call me crazy, but I think I'm going to get an annual pass to Disneyland. <laughs> I live in Utah, which is about 900 miles away from Disneyland. I don't know how many kilometers, a thousand bajillion kilometers. <laughs> anyway, so I live that far away from Disneyland, but I'm planning on going in October for two or three days. And then I'm probably going to be going back in December for two or three days. And it's like $130 or a ticket, but $600 for an annual pass. And I'm like, well, if I just go a couple of times, then that almost pays for itself. I'm saving money by spending $600 on Disneyland. Uh, I'm such a child. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and share with a friend. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. So until then, later kids.